Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, this week we're going to go ahead and cover some questions that we get quite a bit, you know, and that is, how much can your Ram tow? Well, that's not much. But if you have a truck, how much can your truck actually tow? So when we look at this, not really just going to cover towing, we're actually going to look at weight ratings, we're going to talk about how to go to a scale, how to actually read the scale numbers, and what you're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Some of the things that you need to know uh, about your truck is already provided to you. You just need to know where to look. Now, here's the thing. We need to get some information about your particular truck, and that can be found at the driver's side door. Open the driver's side door, and you're going to actually find the yellow sticker that actually provides the weight ratings for your vehicle. Go ahead and grab those numbers, and here's what you're looking for. And you're going to see all the different uh, uh, initials. So we have GVWR, and that stands for Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. You'll want to go ahead and write that number down. Go ahead and look down a little bit further on that sticker, and you're going to see either a combined axle weight rating, but more likely we want to get the rear axle weight rating. Now, this is going to be for towables. We'll get into actually motor coaches in here in just a second, but for towables, you'll need to get the gross vehicle weight rating, not only of the truck, but also of the RV. Now again, the gross vehicle weight rating for the truck is going to be located on the driver's side door when you open it up, whether it's going to be on the column or on the door itself. But all your uh, RVs, whether it's going to be a fifth wheel or a travel trailer, that sticker is going to be on the street side, front left corner, and you'll get the gross vehicle weight rating of your trailer as well. So two times, you're going to get the gross vehicle weight rating. You need to go ahead and get those, have those written down. Now, what we have to do is try and figure out the transfer of weight that actually goes from the trailer over to your RV, I'm saying over to your truck. So if we look at the pictures here of my wonderful drawings, if we start off with fifth wheels, fifth wheels, you'll notice that there's no wheel here, so most of the weight on the front of the RV actually gets transferred to the truck itself, okay? So we have roughly between 20-25% of the total weight of the RV set over here. Now when I say 20-25%, to 25%, it's kind of a range, and I can tell you nowadays we may exceed 25%, upwards of 27%. And it all depends on how much storage, how much how much uh, stuff that we're actually bringing, that we're putting inside the storage. The more weight we put on the front of the RV, the more it gets transferred over to the truck. If you have a towable that's just going to be a bumper pull, then we're looking between 10 and 12 percent of the weight of the trailer actually gets transferred over to the truck. Well, how do we do all these numbers? So let's go ahead and look at what we need to do. Now, in order to actually know exactly what your truck can do and what you're actually pulling, you need to go to a weigh station. Now, typically we may call those cat scales, and you can find those over cat scale locator online or whatnot, but typically this is going to be at the larger truck stop. So this is going to be your pilots and your loves or whatever there may be. Now, whenever you're pulling up, this is what I want you to do, okay? I want you to load the system up and before you get weighed. In order to do this correctly, don't let anyone outside the vehicle. You're going to put everyone in the vehicle, and you're going to fill up your truck with fuel. 100%. So fill up that tank 100%. What we want to do is actually get the gross vehicle weight of that truck as well as the gross vehicle weight of the trailer. So you're going to weigh it as though you're traveling down the road. Don't let anyone out. Don't let the dogs out or anything else in order to get that weight. Now, typically, whenever you pull up to these weigh stations, there's going to be three different scales. Okay, typically you'll know where to pull up because there's a intercom system somewhere on pad one. So you got to pull all the way up. And this is how it works. You'll have your steer axles on one of the pads, your rear axles on the second pad, and then of course your trailer will be on the third pad. Okay, you'll have to hit the button and you're going to have the Waymaster ask you a question. It's kind of fun because it sounds like they're, you know, from Star Trek. <laughs> Right? You have to speak that language. Now, here's what they're actually saying. First way, or reway. Okay? So this will be the first way. 
Okay, so here's the thing. We're, we're going to a place for <laughs> where professionals actually get their trailers weighed, the truck uh, tractors and trailers weighed, and we're just kind of using that as a personal use. So you need to get the first way. Now, when you get your first way, they're going to give it to you in three weights. They're going to give you pad one, which is going to be your steer axle, pad two, which is going to be your rear axle, and then, of course, pad three, which is going to be your trailer. Now, that's the same for our truck and our um, bumper pull, right? So you have your steer, your rear, and your trailer, okay? Now, we're going to also have these numbers here. Let's talk about how we do that. Now, when we're looking at our gross vehicle weight rating, we've only got one way. Now we have all those numbers down. We're going to set that aside. Well, this is what we have to do. You have to take your truck and trailer and go over to a parking spot and disconnect your truck. Leave the trailer there and you're going to come back for that reway. Remember how they're asking you both for your first way, then your re reway. Okay. Everyone's still got to be in the truck. Still have a full tank of gas in the truck and you're going to pull in to pad one and pad two. Doesn't matter whether it's a fifth wheel or a trailer. You're gonna get your second way, okay? Now when you do your second way, you're actually getting the gross vehicle weight, not the rating, but the actual weight of the truck with all its passengers, what we call cargo carrying uh, capacity. You have all of that in there. When you get the two weights, uh, the two readings, now we can start doing some math. And some of this will begin to make sense. Now, the gross vehicle weight rating actually defines the truck plus all the weight. Now, it's not just the weight of me, my passengers, and the fuel, but it's also the weight of the truck, I'm sorry, the trailer, fifth wheel or trailer, pushing down on that truck, We're adding that weight. Remember, this is about 20 to 27 percent. This one's 10 to 12 percent. So whatever that weight is, you actually get the actual weight, okay? So you'll have your first way that gives you both your steer axle, rear axle, and then of course your trailer, those three readings. The second way will just be these two, right? One and two. Now the second way is your gross vehicle weight. You wanna make sure that your gross vehicle weight is under the gross vehicle weight rating. So if you have a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds on that second way, where it's you, you know, it's the truck and all the cargo, on there, right? You want to make sure you're under the gross vehicle weight rating, okay? This, the first test will also give you the weight of the pin that's actually on the truck as well. So you have your first weight with the pin. Are everyone in there, right? You want to make sure you're under the gross vehicle weight rating. The second test, the second test or weight that you get is everything minus the trailer. So that gives you your pin weight actually added to the trailer. So the first one will give you your gross vehicle weight. The second one subtracts out the trailer. That tells you roughly how much weight is actually being transferred over to the truck. Now, I want you to look at the rear axle weight rating. That's what you need to look at next, because now we're going to talk about shifting some of this weight around. Okay. Now, this is just kind of how physics works. If I have more weight on the trailer side pushing forward in front of the axles, then more weight will be pushing down, okay? And there may be a situation where I have enough uh, gross vehicle weight rating of my trailer, but I've got too much up front. So I'm going to learn how to actually move some of my cargo behind uh, the axles here and lift some of that pin weight off the truck, okay? So let's say that we're under um, our total gross vehicle weight rating, but I'm looking at the real axle weight rating. Okay, now how do I do that? Well, that's where I take that first number, subtract the second number, right, on my rear axle, and I wanna make sure that I don't have so much weight sitting on the rear axle. If I do, then I need to take some of the storage that I have here and move it to the back. Okay, so that way I'm not only under my gross vehicle weight rating, but I wanna make sure that I'm under my rear axle rate rating. And that's just because there may be too much weight there. Now, let's talk about how do we get the gross vehicle weight rating of the trailer in the way I asked you, right? And that is, of course, to weigh it totally uh, with the truck connected to the trailer and then take the trailer off. Well, what you'd have to do is take the gross vehicle weight rating, the first reading, right? You'll have that number here. You'll have uh, both pad two and pad three. When you take your second way, you're going to subtract pad two 
from the second time that you've actually weighed it from pad two from the first time you weighed it. And you'll need to actually add that to pad three of the first weighing, okay? Because this will not be on the second way. Okay, so in order to figure this out, you're gonna have to actually take the first reading, figure out what pad three is, you'll see what pad two is. You're gonna take the second reading, subtract pad two um, weight rating from, uh, from the second way, <laughs> take that and subtract it from the first way. Man, this is so difficult. All right, that'll give you your total weight of both pad two and pad three, and that'll give your gross vehicle weight rating over here. Just wanna make sure that you are under the gross vehicle weight rating for the trailer as well as the truck. And again, you may have to move some weight around. All right, so now let's say that with your trailer, let's say that your, ax your rear axle heading, you're under your GVRW here, under your GVRW here, but your axle rating, your rear axle rating is a little heavy, right? This is where they would put on um, those uh, adjusters to push some of the weight to the front axles, right? Now, typically, again, nose heavy, one of two things you could do. If you could take some of the weight from the, uh, whatever you have in the cargo, move it behind, but you can put on the stabilizers to try and push, well, sometimes called stabilizers, but actually what we're doing is we're pushing the weight forward to the front axles, okay? So it just takes a little bit of math to do this. Now, if you have a tow, I mean, if you just have a motor coach, you come in and do your weight. Whether your uh, rear axles will either be on pad two or pad three, you just come in and you want to make sure you're under your GVWR. You still, I will tell you that the rear axle weight rating is important, even on a motor coach, because again, you may be able to take some of the cargo and shift it more forward. And again, this is all that we're doing. We're making sure that we're under our GVWR, but we're also making sure that we're not too heavy on one of the axles, right? So those are your two concerns. Total weight, axle weight. A lot of times people will call it towing capacity. Towing capacity for RVers, we're transferring a lot of that weight on there. We do need to be under that. This is how we actually figure that out. You have your gross combined vehicle weight rating, right? And that typically comes from the truck, but that's not on the truck. You actually have to go look it up. You're making model and year and find out what the combined, uh, gross combined vehicle weight rating is. And that's going to be both the truck and the trailer. Typically we're under that, but that's, that's the one you got to find. And then you got to get your curb weight, which is just the weight of the truck by itself right? Maybe just the uh, person driving the vehicle is typically how they do that. And then maybe half a tank, right? So that's what they call curb weight. Typically for us, we don't hit that. We do need to be under there, but it's these two numbers that we're actually playing with here. We want to make sure we're under a gross vehicle weight rating and make sure we're not too heavy on the axle. If so, we got to do some shifting with our equipment. Okay. Move that over there. All right, now let's talk about, you know, our cargo situation, right? There's so many considerations, it's a give and take. Many of you, especially with motor coaches, you may actually try and fill up your freshwater holding tank. Well, guys, let's kind of figure this stuff out. A gallon of water is 8.23 pounds per gallon, and if you try and fill up a 100-gallon tank, you're adding quite a bit of weight, upwards of 823 pounds. For you towables, if you've got a 50-gallon holding tank, you got about 400 pounds. Now that's gonna really eat into your cargo carrying capacity. Now let's think about all the clothes that you actually put in the RV. Did you upgrade the bed? That adds weight, right? Did you take out that whatever mattress they give you <laughs> is and then put in a heavier bed? All of that stuff is going to begin to really eat into your cargo carrying capacity, right? So these are just gives and takes and I will tell you that all of these as RVers we typically do exceed the gross vehicle weight rating because we may have 2,500 pounds total to deal with. All right, so I will tell you a couple of considerations that I don't put much water in there. I hear some people say a third in their tank. And I guess a third is simply because that's the first indicator on most of our um, sensors. It, when you flush, because I know people say, well, we gotta have flushing water. You flush less than a half a gallon of water. How many times do you go into the bathroom down the road? Okay, uh, how many times are you gonna drink water, right? So on something like that, put just a gallon or two of water uh, up in the kitchen, leave your holding tanks as light as possible, right? And that'll give you some more cargo carrying capacity. 
Not that you're going to drive light anywhere else. It's just probably you already got too many clothes. One thing to also think about is, is if you're not a full-timer, don't pack all your clothes um, for your trip. Just bring just enough clothes for the trip. I know it's a moving home. And I know that it seems kind of convenient because you've got a nice big closet. But try not to fill that up, especially if you're only going to start using, you know, if you're only going to use a third of those clothes, right? Because I know the clothes, same thing with shoes. They really start packing on weight. Do you bring tools? One of the reasons I don't talk about what tools as a tech should I bring as an RVer, simply because just the tools alone may be a thousand pounds if you bring enough tools. So, you know, again, it's a give and take. You may have to figure out that you have more weight capacity, uh, cargo carrying capacity for the truck. You tried to put it in the trailer. You may have to move it over to the truck, right? And again, these are just considerations. Do you have solar? A typical solar build may have somewhere between 300 and 600 pounds. That eats into your cargo carrying capacity. Just something to consider. Oh, by the way, never listen to the salesperson that tells you what you can pull with your RV. Never listen to the salesperson of the truck because they'll say they could pull everything, okay? And they really can't. You have to just do the math uh, with that. So don't listen to them. Do the math yourself to find out whether it can be done or not, whether it can be pulled, whether you can pull it or not. And guys, quite honestly, bigger is always better when it comes to the truck, right? If you have the, uh, you know, if you're looking, say, between a three-quarter ton and a full ton, okay? A couple thousand dollars worth of difference. I will tell you, Go ahead and go to that one ton, right? When you do that, you're going to get a little bit more car cargo carrying capacity, your GVWR back here, and the axle rating actually increases as well, okay? It is worth it. Don't let them tell you that a half ton can pull or a single, you know, single axle uh, truck can actually pull most fifth wheels. Now, here's the thing, because I know a lot of you keyboard warriors are going to say, I've been doing it for years. It's totally fine. You don't need to follow that, okay? That may be you. And that may be because you haven't had to actually break fast or anything else, okay? But these numbers are here. They're actually given to us and provided to us by the NTSHA to follow. And that's what we're going to do here. It's just here's the numbers. This is what you need to be looking for when you make your purchasing decisions as well as when you're putting in all of your cargo. By the way, with your tires, right? So one couple things. I will see people do this. They'll upgrade their tires on their trailer totally fine. Okay, that doesn't add any cargo carrying capacity. That just gives you a stronger sidewall, which is fine. You upgrade your tires, right? But the one thing you want to do is make sure you get the proper pressure on those tires. Now, the tires themselves, they give you their maximum uh, pressure rating cold. Now, cold means you haven't traveled down the road, which means you got to test the pressure before you even pull out. You travel 10 minutes down the road, it's already too late. The pressure's already increased. Uh, simply because heat increases the pressure. So make sure that you actually got the proper pressure before you pull out. There's your tech tip. <laughs> All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below, or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to RVTechCourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, roll the bloopers. Did you did you do an ear check? Check, check, check. Check with your ears. I don't see a red light over here. Is there a red light on? Weird. Bow, 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 bow. You need to go ahead and get <laughs> your... Um, well, that's the only place I go. You totally, totally blew my whole train of thought. Tires. All right.